How to install a floor pan in a 1968 Dodge Charger, part one. Okay, here we go. I'm laying out a rough cut line, feeling underneath, making sure I'm not going to cut into or damage any of the substructure or the frame or any brackets. And this is just a yellow crayon marker. And switching over to the plasma cutter, we want to take our time and really trace out these lines and be accurate. <coughs> and like I mentioned, this is a rough cut. And that means we're cutting well away from the inner structure so we can get a majority of the floor pan out of the way. And then we're going to proceed from there. All right, down the home stretch. And there it is. Got a big chunk of uh, real estate out of the way. Now we have better access and we can see what we're doing. And now this front section, laying out the rough cut line, we'll be taking that out in pieces because there are much more braces towards the front and brackets so we don't want to get too aggressive and uh, cause any damage by cutting into any of the brackets or braces so we'll just piece that thing out and now you're starting to see or it's revealing the subframe underneath of this car and we're also going to be replacing the floor pan extension on the driver's side and that's what I'm removing now and this is a four-speed equipped or manually equipped uh, transmission charger and it does have a different hump for the transmission on the transmission tunnel and at the factory it was basically just laid on there and then this welded in spots and I'm cutting through those welds and then I'm going to be divorcing this transmission tunnel four speed tunnel with the air hammer with a chisel bit and here's a shot of that And there it is. Looks like there was a little bit of damage. We'll address that later. Something punched through that. And opening up the wiring guttering. So we can clean that with the wire brush and reveal the resistance welds. And get this thing separated and out of the way. Okay, now once a rough cut has been accomplished, now I'm progressively getting closer to the frame and the bracket, cutting away the floor pan, revealing the underneath. And you can see with the yellow lines, we always want to make uh, we always want to make lines or marks to follow. I never really want to freehand this. It's really easy to damage or uh, cut through a bracket. Yeah, we don't want to make ourselves any extra work. So you can see it becoming smaller. And that's going to be the tracing the outline of the substructure underneath. And there's your first shot. And now that we have it to this level now we're going to finish off the floor pan removal with an air hammer with a uh, special chisel bit now there's a couple of different ways to do this one method is to drill out locate then uh, drill out all of the resistance welds and I don't really I don't really like to do that method because it leaves holes in the brackets the subframe the frame 
then those have to be addressed later. So my method is to use the air hammer and work my way around the resistance weld, lifting up the floor pan at the same time. And uh, that's going to yield a much, much cleaner result. And that's just my preferred method. And once we get enough of this floor pan up, well, then we're going to stop and cut that piece out of the way. And now we can just repeat the process. And this is a much, much faster way to do it than drilling out all of the resistance wells. However, there are times where this method won't work. And I'll show you that here in a second. Getting that last little remnant out of the way. Going along the uh, frame. Just peeling that right out of the way. There it is. And here's a really good shot of this particular method. You just work your work the chisel bit around the resistance wells, peel, break the uh, break the resistance weld. Lift and peel. And repeat the process. And we peel up enough, uh, once we get to a certain point of, uh, Metal that's already been separated, and then we just cut that off, gain more access, and just keep going until uh, the entire floor pan has been, has been removed. Now, this will leave a small remnant of resistance weld, or possibly floor pan, but that's easily cleaned up later with a uh, grinding bit with minimal effort. Now this is one of the areas I mentioned before that you don't want to use the air chisel solely to re separate these panels. We really want to drill out the resistance wells here. Then we use light pressure with the air hammer and that's only to separate the panels. Otherwise we take a really big chance of uh, just destroying the parent metal on that. We don't want to do that. We want to leave a nice clean edge that's uh, undamaged. And here you can see that's separating really nicely. And there's a little bracket here. We always have to be mindful. Not getting too big of a hurry. And there's that little piece bracket and uh, not damaged. And here I'm speeding it up. I'm uh, Going around it with the grinding wheel, just knocking off any little any little remnants, just knocking down everything to uh, to flat. And now I have a wire brush on the grinder, and now I'm cleaning the area, and you can really start to see how nice of a finish this is. Yeah, if I had drilled out all the resistance, well, there would be multiple holes all along this, uh, all along the lip. A really nice shot of that. Now we're just like back at the factory, and this is what it would have looked like before the floor pan was installed. 
Now we're going to clean that out a little bit more with the wire brush on the uh, grinder. Blow it all out. And we're going to be applying a well through primer. Now, well through primer has zinc in it. And if you have bare steel, there's only two top coats that you want to apply to bare steel that is an actual corrosion resistance barrier. That is a primer with zinc or an epoxy. Anything else, and you will get corrosion behind the primer or whatever top coat you're using. And here's a really good shot. We've been really thorough with the primer, gotten it down inside all the crevices inside of this uh, brace. And now we are set up for part two. This was the deconstruction, part one. And on our next uh, part two, it's all on the floor. Hey, thanks for watching.